Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Home Studying Channel. If today is the first time you're visiting with us, we want to extend you a very warm welcome and invite you to view any of our over 430 videos that we've arranged for your convenience in playlists, as we are confident you're going to find something both useful and entertaining to watch. If you've been here before and you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Do subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. All right, friends, happy March. Another year, another month in 2020, and we are ready to give you some more fun and exciting projects. <coughs> so welcome again. Today we're going to build a, a very unique trivet. We're going to use um, backsplash tiles like this in different sizes and wood that most of you will probably have running, uh, running, laying around your shop to build a custom, very nice, very modern, universal looking trivet. So stick around and see how we're going to do so that. So we went to our local store and we purchased uh, decorative uh, tile pieces that they are, I believe, glass. Mm -hmm. And we bought them in this uh, format that they are uh, adhered to some backing. So we're going to take them out of the material that they are protected in. Um, for our project, we only needed one. If we were doing a full kitchen or something like that, we would need to buy, obviously. Well, we think we're needing one. We're going to see. <laughs> wow. So the next step will be to remove them from the backing. Well, that wasn't on there at all. Oh, that, that, that wasn't the backing. All right, so we're going to have to remove them. And we are going to be a, back a, with you. A plastic mat that holds them together. And we are going to separate them one by one. We are going to get with you once we are done. So after we separated everything, we found a pattern we like. We did remove the small pieces because it, will, it was making the trivet just too large for our taste. And we're going to find down the road some project to utilize them. But for now, this is, uh, uh, and we, it, it is almost a 10 by 10, right? Yeah. So now we're going to move to the next step. As always, we're doing a dry fitting. And we decided to use two pieces of wood for a, a trim. Is that what we're mm -hmm. going to call it? Yeah. And we're going to overlap them here to give the piece a little more of uh, a distinctive detail. So we're going to have to cut these pieces and uh, we'll do another dry fitting and we'll be right back with you. Now, there are many different ways you can do that. You can buy a, a thicker piece here, right? Instead of mm -hmm. two pieces mm -hmm. and maybe do a miter corner or you can do a straight uh, butt corners, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, this is down to a matter of taste and, and exactly how you want your piece to look. This is what we're thinking at this moment, unless we change our mind, which is not absolutely out of the question, right? Mm -hmm. But we, we're going to go with this process. It, it needs a little bit of thought because we need the corners to be similar throughout the piece, right? Right. So we're going to work on that and I will be right now back. We're going to start the markings on this side. And we want this to be flush here, right? Mm -hmm. So we have our, our pencil and we're going to make our first mark. And more than likely we're going to just hand cut those because that makes the most sense, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and we're going to start cutting our pieces. Was it a good cut? Pretty decent. All right, and we need to cut another one in the same dimension, was it? Actually, put it on top. Well, you need to move the saw because it's black. 
put the saw down. Is it perfect? I think it's thing. All right. So we have two pieces. I just need to take the sandpaper and knock that off a little bit. Well, we have the knife here. We can do that with the knife too. Here, 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 here. Teaching all your viewers bad habits of bringing a knife toward you. That's not how it works. It's fine. So, this goes there? Oh, sorry. There. So now we have the dimension for that one, right? right. Alright, so we're going to mark, as you can see, we're just uh, marking and cutting, marking and cutting. So we're going to mark the next piece, cut it, and we'll move on. Alright, so we're rolling. So I guess you need to go through both now, only through the inside, right? All right. And we're going to go around and do that. We'll get back with you when we're done with all the cutting. A quick little sanding to rough any edges that might make our corner less than perfect because also we're... Also known as smoothing the edges. What did I say? Rough the edges. Well, we're smoothing the rough edges. Mm -hmm. So our connections will be perfect because we are all for perfection here at the Urban Homesteading Channel. And it is dark outside, that's why we're working inside. We converted our dining area into a, a trivet workshop. Trivet, but of course. And we end up with a full extra length of... And another partial too. Yeah, so... We did well material-wise. Conservative. Yes. Economical. Well, you're always supposed to buy more than what you need. You're always supposed to calculate what you need. We eyeball. That's our, our calculation. Yeah, we need about that much, right? Yeah. All right, so we'll finish that with all the pieces and uh, we shall return. Okay, here's our dry fitting. And we're going to use glue, our trusted tight bone two, and also some brad nails to make the attaching. So we're going to be back with you when we achieve that, or you can watch a little bit of it. Let's start with five and seven. Start with five and seven. Right. Uh, I'd rather start with one and two because they are, we can put them right up against the edge. So, put in glue and lining it up with the edges. Hold it. Okay. Is it lined up? I don't think it's lined up. Nothing happened. Okay. Nothing happened? Nope. This line. All right, and we're going to go around uh, and do all of them that the same way. What is your? Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Take your finger. Wait. I want to make sure. And the plywood sometimes it's blow. Breaking. It's plywood. Okay. 
We're only putting three. It is plywood. Yes. If that's what she needs. Is it touching there? On there? Is it as tight it's as it's touching it can be? as it's gonna get. Okay. Okay. I guess it's the line that makes me think there is a, a gap there. I don't know. It looks a little gappy. It is, slightly. I just Staying said it was as tight. It. It's as tight as it's gonna get. Is the is what? I'm trying to remember the word. The thing we used to cover things in your apartment or here. The wood putty. Yes. Is in my apartment. I am happy to go get it. Let's put the other one, the piece here, too. So we know where it is. I need to go a little more in because this is already already blown, and if I put a staple yes, there, it's going to... I agree. Nasi doesn't like the sounds, it's okay. I understand that. You need to use the thing, it needs to be 90 degrees. Do you want to use the square or not? I don't know what you want me to do with it because it is what it is right now. It was more about this because this was the square? Yes. Do the middle first. It's okay, Sierra. 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 So we're done with the construction of the frame, as you can see, and we are going to uh, stain the wood. But before we do that, we're going to touch up any imperfections with some wood putty, so the piece will look complete. Again, when I'm building something for my garage or for demonstration purposes, I don't necessarily do this, but since this is going to be visible, we think it's appropriate to that's just touch it up. And you can dab if you want a little bit on the holes, on the nail holes. So everywhere we find any imperfection, we're going to dab it up. We don't want to go in between the boards. We want to see the separation, right? Yeah, I think the, so. The idea is not to make it look like one piece. We want it to look like two pieces. It's okay. And we're going to go around and just touch up any areas we think are not going to look to the level we want the piece to look. One of the things we didn't discuss, you might see some numbers here on, on our pieces. And why we put those numbers there? Well, we put them there because we wanted to be able to ensure we were using the pieces in, this, in the place that we wanted because it has to line up just right for this pattern to make sense. Right, and believe it or not, they, they're, they have to be exact. 
otherwise it just, just doesn't look right. The same piece has to go to the place it was measured and cut for. Otherwise it just doesn't look correct. So we're just sanding down a little bit of rough edge that was left from the wood putty. So we did wait for the wood putty to dry and we did uh, a light sanding on it and now we are ready to start the staining process. We are only going to stain the, stain the frame part, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right left. And of course when we stain we prefer to, to use a, a wipe on technique versus a, a brush or any other methodology. This has worked the best for us. Again, this is a piece you're going to put food on, not directly, but uh, food platters, right? And uh, maybe pots and pans and things of this nature. The glass will provide a good surface to prevent damaging your table or any surface you put this uh, on. And we have used this uh, stain on several of our projects. As we routinely do, of course, we do not throw away a consumable such a stain because we can always find a use down the road for, for them again. Yep. Yeah, and if we find a color we like, we definitely want to stick with it. Because then all the pieces that we use it on match the rest of the decor. Or our favorite approach to buying, whatever is on sale. Well, we're definitely economical when it comes to our projects. And that holds true for stain and paint and everything else. Now on this project, uh, really, we should be able, after a few minutes, just give the stain a little bit of time to settle. We should be able to move on the next step, don't you think? Yeah. All right, then we finished the staining. We don't need to stain this part where we are going to actually adhere the, the, the glass tiles on, but we did want to stain the side so when you see it, you do not see the bare wood. Uh, we like the stain, we've used it in several projects so far, and again, it does not disappoint us. We're going to give the stain just a few moments to dry, and then we're going to dry fit the the tiles and then we're going to adhere them and this will be another project done. Any comments ladies? Looking Lady? good. Okay, and here is our last dry fit. Before we permanently adhere them and we are looking at see if we need to make any last minute corrections or any adjustments. You always need to dry fit before the final assembly to make sure this is what you want the final project to look like. So what do you guys think? Anything we need to alter or we're good to go? No, I like it. And you? I like it. All right. So we're ready to start gluing the tile to our trivet and we consider several options for this. We decided to go with liquid nails because it's a, a good industrial strength adhesive that we've used in the, past, in, in the past with very good results. And it states that it works best for wood and wall tile. This is tile, this is wood. These are the first two uh, uses that it says it's good for. So we think this is going to be a good use. We're going to prepare our uh, tube here. Again, that's another small compromise we did because we do not have our, what do you call that, caulking gun? Uh -huh. So we couldn't use a, a large caulking tube. And the sad thing is in, in, back in Kansas we have several tubes of this. But we had to go and buy one out. Alright, we're going to make, how big an opening you want this? Um... Probably not very big. One of the 
knife is over there. Okay. Okay, here you go. That's good. One of the considerations uh, when we decided what glue we wanted was, of course, that we wanted a little bit of work time. We did consider contact cement, but because it is instant and you cannot really move it at all after you touch it, we decided against that. So we're going to complete gluing all the tiles and we're going to get back with you. And this is our finished uh, piece. What we did between the last dry fit and the finished product is we did actually uh, finish the area that we attached it because you can see slightly through the, the glass sometimes and we didn't want that to be unfinished. Uh, again, that's prefer uh, personal preference. We chose to do that, you don't have to do this, but here we go. What do you guys think? I think it turned out beautifully. I love it. All right. Pretty nice. Good. And this is our project for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we're going to be right with you to complete. It's not focused. So we decided to sacrifice some of our corks and create some cork feet for our trivet. And you see us here in our very sophisticated workshop cutting some corks to contribute to the project. Only in the Everyone Home Standing Channel, folks, you can see this kind of technology. Cork work. Our amazing technology, right? Mm -hmm. And cork dust. Cork dust. <laughs> All right. So let's go and attach them using the same right method. Now. Okay. So we're using a dab of glue on each cork. Maybe we do two at a time. I don't think it will immediately add here. I thought you were going to go on the other side. But you're holding this one up.
course you can also buy some ready-made um, cork or what are the other polyurethane not polyurethane polys uh, yeah, just feet. rubber feet or okay yeah belt pads there's lots of options out there all right and here it is is a little lifted from the table now Now, it would have been easier if we were to turn it over, but we're not sure that uh, the liquid nail is reaches enough strength to hold that if we turn it upside down. Until it completely cured. Right. So we did it that convoluted way, but it works. That's the important thing, right? All right, folks. Wow. All right, friends. And this is our project for today. We really like the way it turned out. And we're looking forward to using it in, in the near future. If you did enjoy this short episode, please smash that like button. If you didn't, the other button work as well. Share, like, subscribe, and let us know what you would like to see in future episodes of the Urban Homesteading channel. From the Grass Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, and Elpida, we want to wish you a great week, and we're going to see you soon with more episodes of the Urban Homesteading channel. Farewell, friends.